Okay. Cool. So, um, lecture two on sign convention. We're in the chapter, first of all, we got to chapter two, circuit analysis, right? So we're doing things a bit more systematically now. Lecture 2.1 is on sign convention, which I've been promising for a little while that we would get to. So we will use the passive sign convention of electrical engineering, defined below and illustrated in figure 2.1. So the passive sign convention says that power flowing in to a component is considered to be positive, and power flowing out of a component is considered to be negative. Because the power... well, let's look at the figure. So this is the passive sign convention. If power flows into the component, we're going to say that's positive power. If power flows out of the po component, we're going to say that's, that's negative power. So that's our little diagram. Help us out remembering that. Uh, for passive elements, the electrical potential must drop in the direction of positive current flow. So that's the sign convention that we have. It might actually go the other way, in which case we'll get a negative sign that comes out. Okay? Uh, this means the assumed direction of voltage drop across a passive element must be the same as that of the current flow. For active elements, which supply power to the circuit, the converse is true. The voltage drop and current flow must be in opposite directions. So figure 2.2 shows the possible configurations. So for passive elements, we're on the left-hand side here. The voltage drop plus to minus, current flow goes plus to minus, right? If the plus and minus are switched, are reversed, so the plus is the bottom, the minus is the top, the current, the assumed direction of current flow is still from plus to minus. For active elements, it's the opposite, though. For active elements, plus to minus um, um, is against the current flow. And same if you flip them. So that's like the gist of the sign convention. It's, it's very ubiquitous in electrical engineering and everybody who does electronics. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's not something that, that um, we should be too stressed out about, but like the implications of it uh, uh, we need to now consider. So when analyzing a circuit for each passive element, draw an arrow beside it pointing in the direction of assumed current flow and voltage drop. Let's try it out on figure 2, 3. So here's our figure. Got a circuit with some resistors, some capacitors, and an inductor with a voltage source supplying power. So the voltage source is, is something that we I mean, we have to talk about this a little bit more in a bit, but uh, the plus and minus directions are whatever they are when you, where you, when you connected it, right? So the plus and minus for a source, you don't get to choose. Um, once it's connected to the circuit, it is whatever way it is. So plus and minus, and for an active element, the current, the assumed direction of current flow is uh, from minus to plus. So the direction shown with the little arrow here. And if we were to... It's green. So now we can... We can draw a little arrow. Sometimes people like to draw plus or minus. I like to draw an arrow. Um, it's up to you. Uh, you can do both if you want, but it's a little bit redundant. So I like to just draw... Um, let's see. I just like to draw a little, little arrow beside things. Um, so I chose to go to the right with that. Did I need to do that? Could I have gone left? I could have gone left, right? Because it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's a passive element. You can assign it arbitrarily. Now, I know that if this thing is really supplying current in this direction, then IR1, the current flowing through R1, 
would come out negative if this was a positive current, right? So it's common to draw arrows in the same direction around the loop, but uh, you don't have to. There's nothing requiring it. Um, so you could go, for instance, this way on R2. And it's very common. We like to draw arrows toward ground, but you don't have to. You, you can draw it whichever direction you want. Um, and notice that it's element by element that we're doing this, right? So say we did it, uh, so, well, I, I drew it this way first. So let's say, in this case, how are I, C, 2, and I, L, 1 related? They're, they're equal. If I flipped this arrow, I flipped this arrow, and now it was this way. What's the relationship? Yeah, exactly. And so KCL tells us, if we look at the node here, says that in this case, I C2 plus I L1 equals 0. So they change signs when you go to the other side with it. That's... Uh, uh, sort of the, the, the passive sign convention applied to a circuit. So, I mean, it's, it's nice because you don't really have to stress about it, right? Like, you can just draw an arrow in any direction that you like. I will mention that there are, so passive sign conventions universal uh, choice of how to apply it to a circuit. Sometimes people use, like, they call it mesh analysis, for instance, and then they have a, an assumed direction of current flow. We're not, we're not using that uh, method, so we can just component by component just say this direction. So we're assuming that the voltage is dropping plus to minus, right? Plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. But we, we don't need to draw all of those pluses and minuses because once we drew the arrow, we drew it in the direction of voltage drop and current flow assumed Direction. Or it's better to say the uh, conventional direction of, positive, of, of voltage drop and current flow. But we will often use the, the terminology assume. Um, like we assume that a force is you know, pointed to the right, but comes out negative, so it's actually pointed to the left. That type of idea. OK. So, uh, so a resistor is passive. Yes. Element, and then uh, like the sources are active. Then. Exactly. So resistor, capacitor, inductor, all passive. If it supplies power from external to the surface, uh, to the circuit, then uh, it is an active element. Okay. Otherwise, it's passive. Right. That's. I was like, it's an active. Yeah. Thank you for for asking that. Yeah. That's it's good clarification. So the purpose of a sign convention is to help us interpret the signs of our results. For instance, if at a given instant a capacitor has voltage Vc equals 3 volts and current Ic equals negative 2 amps, we compute that the power is negative 6 watts. Okay, And we know 6 watts of power is flowing from the capacitor into the circuit. right? So we know how to interpret it because our sign convention uh, uh, was that power flowing into a component, a passive component, is positive, and flowing out is negative. So it's flowing out, in this case, from the capacitor, because it's negative 6 watts. And so now we, we are able to interpret the result because of that. Or if you had a current that you solved for that came out negative, it would, in fact, be flowing the opposite direction from how you drew the arrow on your diagram. For passive elements, there is no preferred direction of assumed voltage drop and current flow. If a voltage or current value discovered uh, by performing a circuit analysis is positive, this means the assumed and actual directions are the same. For a negative value, the directions are opposite. For active elements, we don't get to choose the direction. 
The physical situation prescribes it. For instance, if a positive terminal of a battery is connected to a certain terminal in a circuit, I can't simply say meh, I'm going to call it negative. It's positive whether you like it or not. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> can't help myself. OK, so uh, that's the, that's the uh, sign convention. Are there any questions on sign convention before we start doing circuit analysis in the next lecture? Okay.